Teacher Onizuka, or GTO, is a series that looks like just any other anime from the late 90s on the surface. But it's so much more than that. Originally a manga series that ran from 96 to 02, created by Toru Fujisawa, it's about a 22 year old guy who was once a gang leader and is now a jobless graduate from a fifth rate university. And his dream is to become the greatest teacher of them all. The manga is one of the greatest ever made in my opinion, but in this video we'll be focusing on the 1999 anime adaptation instead. It does many things differently and is much shorter than the manga since it was being worked on in tandem with the manga which eventually outlived it. But I feel it's a great taste into what GTO is and what kind of madman Onizuka is. GTO is funny, that much is a given. There's so many hilarious moments and jokes that make every moment of this show a joyride. The callbacks are phenomenal and you get rewarded for paying attention during its runtime. It's essentially everything I love in comedy. Some of these jokes range from just a few exchanges from characters to just visual insanity. It's kind of amazing honestly how the author fits so many hilarious moments into this show. But when you think about it, it's all thanks to the wonderful character that is Ekichi Onizuka. Onizuka is just a wild card. You have no idea what's going to happen next when he's around. Take a scene from just the second episode. Onizuka has pretty obviously flunked his interview at Holy Forest Academy, but when he was about to leave, some old students came to beat up the vice principal. And the vice principal told him that he would think about accepting him as a teacher if he threw out the trash. Now answer me this, did Onizuka A beat up the old students, or B went on a speech about how calling people trash is bad? Well, technically, if you picked B, you're correct, but also he fucking German suplexed the vice principal before his speech. Yeah, when I first watched this many years ago, back when I was in like, the ninth grade, I was honestly stunned. Like, what was going through his mind to do that? But, what was coming out of my mouth was laughter. It was just pure joy. But back then, I didn't fully understand Onizuka's speech that came after. Yeah, I got what he meant, but I didn't fully understand the meaning behind those words, until my rewatch six months ago. During my time at school, most teachers took students for granted. If we didn't act a certain way or studied diligently, we would essentially be seen as failures. They never explicitly said it, but you could tell by the way they looked at you, or the way they worded their criticisms. Around the 10th grade onwards, I started gaining a passion for writing. I enjoyed typing away on my computer, writing stupid stories, analyzing my favorite pieces of media. It was fun, but at school we were told to write a certain way or write about certain themes because that's how the markers liked it. It was never really write what you like to write and will give you proper criticisms. Creative writing never felt creative because of that. We had to stick with the norm if we wanted to succeed, was what we were being told. So I finally understood Onizuka's speech, and it honestly made me feel so many different emotions that I didn't know what to do. And that wasn't the only thing that GTO taught me. It taught me so many different things about life and how to live it to the fullest. So many layers I never knew existed. If anything, GTO was more so a show about teaching the viewer more than anything else. This was what made GTO so special. Yeah, the show is extremely funny, but my favorite moments of the show were the melancholic ones. The ones where I went, wow, this is what I was missing. The many faces of GTO is partly what makes this possible. Kanzaki, Namura, Kikuchi, Yoshikawa, Murai, Fuyutsuki, and even Uchi Yamada, Anako, and Aizawa. They all have their own stories, their own lives, and they all have their own problems. They just didn't have anyone to help them get through those problems. That's where Onizuka comes in. He was the link they needed to get their shit together. The first arc in the show when Onizuka starts teaching at Holy Forest Academy was related to Yoshikawa. He was constantly being bullied by a group of girls and even got picked on by Onizuka a few times. But Onizuka respected him in a way because of how much he knew about games. This led to a bit of a friendship. but. Things got worse, and it led to Yoshikawa trying to kill himself. And what followed was them both falling off the roof and landing on the vice principal's car. But more importantly, Yoshikawa learned about Onizuka's simple philosophy of life, and why he decided to teach. That was the best part. There was a genuine smile on Yoshikawa's face. It was a sweet scene. 
But of course, that wasn't the end of Yoshikawa's problems or any other students. Each episode after, we got scenarios with the students where they all try to get Onizuka kicked out of the school, as they've done before. But they continue to fail one by one, and each and every time, Onizuka changes them for the better, helps them open up about their feelings, and learn how to really live life. It's honestly beautiful. For as many times as I laughed, I teared up just as many. Onizuka not only feels like he's talking to his students when he's teaching them, but also us, the viewer. But let's turn to my favorite arc of the show, the Urumi Kanzaki arc. At this point in the show, Onizuka is starting to gain the trust of quite a few of his students, and was even broadcast as a hero as on TV. Everything was going smoothly, but then Kanzaki appears. She's essentially an antithesis of the blondes being dumb stereotype. She's actually a child prodigy with an IQ of over 200. She is, however, a deeply disturbed kid. She tries her best to make Onizuka's life into a living hell. We see her using her high IQ to break Fuyutsuki, almost making her resign. We can see how spoiled she is due to everyone putting her on a pedestal. But of course, Onizuka exists. He starts getting closer to her, learning more about her. We find out how depressed she really is, and then this happens. But even still, Kanzaki starts to lose it after seeing her old teacher. The one who essentially emotionally broke Kanzaki. She goes and tries to blow up the school because of this. Onizuka figured Kanzaki out by this point, and we get to see the climax of the arc. Afterwards, we see Kanzaki start to genuinely like Onizuka due to his love for his students. Moving on has always been an important theme in GTO, and this arc proves it best. It created an interesting situation filled with great characters, a fantastic climax, and a core theme that really moves you by the end. The show is filled with many more amazing themes and ideas that really get me going. Great Teacher Onizuka is a really special series, and I hope you, viewing this video right now, feel the same. No other series has inspired me more than GTO, and that's something important. Ah!